Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over how to make top-down scrolling wall collision in Scratch. As you can see here, I can move in all four directions. There's a nice camera that follows us smoothly, has some damping on it even, and there's some gray walls around us. And if we go ahead and bump into them, we can't go through them. And it's super smooth, we can still move the other direction while we're colliding. Meaning if we're colliding to the right, we can still move up and down just fine. Or if we collide up top, we can still move right to left. It's not like bouncy or jittery or anything like that it's buttery smooth it can also handle other shapes quite well too as you can see i have a circle down here and it's handling it just fine another nice thing about it is that we never can get stuck because it's using a square hitbox instead of the cat if you continue watching and this tutorial seems to help you out then make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing we are so insanely close to 10k actually you know what we might actually hit 10k by the time this video is out Alrighty, so for this video, I'm going to start with a blank project. As you can see, I literally just created it and I'm going to call it like wall collision. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on the sprite and name this player. Really quick, I'll make the background gray like this. That way it doesn't make our eyes hurt. And then I'll make a new sprite by clicking on this paint tool and call it wall. Make sure the stuff that you want your cat to collide with is inside of this sprite called wall. So I'll go ahead and import the wall shapes that I have from my project from the beginning. And as you can see, it's just a circle right here with some shapes here and here to test our collision with. Alrighty, this looks pretty good. So let's start programming the basic player movement. So inside the player, pull a wind green flag clicked, and then we need to make some position variable. So make a for the sprite only variable called X and another for the sprite only variable called Y. These are just going to keep track of the X and Y positions of the player. Now in the very beginning, let's set those two to zero. So it starts in the middle of the screen. Next, we need a tick loop that will happen super fast. So we can go ahead and do a when I receive message tick with a colon and then position player. We need to go ahead and store our movement input. So let's make two more variables for all sprites called input x and input y. So these will just store if we're pressing up or down or right or left. Now let's go ahead and set the input x to the key depressed. And nothing will actually happen if we start this right now because we never actually broadcast this message. So let's just go into the backdrops and add a wind grain flight click ever broadcast tick. So as you can see here, the input x turns to false and and then when we press D, as you can see, it's true, but it ignores if we press the A key. To fix that, set the X input to D minus the A. You can now see that it's zero, and then when we press D, it's one, and then when we press A, it's negative one. So there we go, we have our key access being stored on the input X. Now let's do the same for input Y. So go ahead and simply duplicate this, and then change this to set input Y. Next, we just want to do key W minus key S. So you can now see that when we press W, input Y is 1, and when we press S, it's negative 1. So now that we know those are working, let's go ahead and untick those so that way they aren't shown here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make a block that will allow us to move our player. Make a custom block called move, and then a colon, make an input called DX, and an input called DY. That's just short for direction X and direction Y. Now click run screen without refresh. Next, all you need to do is go to the X plus the DY, because because that's what we're actually incrementing by. And then for the Y, do Y plus DY. Last but not least, we can change the X by DX and change the Y by DY. So that's just saying change the X by the amount we're moving on the X and change the Y the amount we're moving on the Y. So if we go ahead and show the X and Y, do move one zero, which means one on the X and zero on the Y, the X starts going up and the cat starts moving to the right. Or if maybe do one on the Y, you can see that it starts moving up we have this movement function working so let's go ahead and actually use it so right after we get the input for the x we can move by the input x and then zero and then once we do the y we can go ahead and move input y for the y now when we press wasd our cat can actually move around we can move up down left and right now the only issue here is we move extremely slow so let's make a new variable for the sprite only called move speed you know what actually let's name it speed now in the very beginning here let's set the speed to 5. That seems good. Now we can just move the input x times the speed and then do the same thing for the y. Input y times speed. So you can now see that it works the same except we move faster. Awesome. Let's also make it to where when you go to the left your cat will flip to the left. So to do this go ahead and make some space right here and check if we are actually moving. So to do 
this, we can check if not equals x input in the right and then zero, I'm sorry, zero on the right and x input on the left. So if the x input is not zero, that means we're moving, then we can point in direction the x input times 90, which if it's negative one will be negative 90. And if it's one, it'll be 90. You can now see when we go to the left, it flips upside down. And when we go to the right, it's normal. So to fix the weird flipping issue, let's go ahead and set the rotation style to left, right in the beginning. Now you can see it actually looks normal and we can move up and down and it flips correctly. Now it is getting a bit messy with all this stuff here. So let's go ahead and move these to their own kind of custom block area. So make a block called movement like so and click OK. And all we need to do is go ahead and move this into the movement and then run the movement on the tick. You can now see that it works exactly the same, but it's just cleaner and kind of in its own section over here. So now that we have all the movement stuff, let's get the actual wall collision working because we can still just phase through walls. It's actually really, really simple because of the way we set it up. All we need to do is add an if statement right above these change x by dx and change y by dy. Check if we are touching the wall, which is this sprite that has all the collision stuff in it. Then if we are, then we are going to stop this script so that way it stops stops us from moving down here. It's kind of like calling return if you've used like JavaScript or C sharp or anything like that. And as you can see, as soon as we do this, look at this, it actually works immediately. Wow, that was really easy. However, there is a slight issue. If I go up to a wall while I'm pressing W, it kind of does this little bounce thing. So it'll go up and then when I let go, it goes down. So the way to fix that is just by duplicating this go to and putting it up here. Now we don't want to do that because that's going to mess it up. So we want to just do go to X and go to Y and then stop the script. So as soon as we do this, you can see that when we go up there and we press W, it does nothing and it's perfectly smooth. And it even works on like circles and stuff. Now there is one little issue. If I turn around really quick while I'm going on the circle, here we go. I got my foot stuck inside of the circle. And here's another example. I can't move right now because I'm stuck inside of the circle. So to fix that, we need to use a hitbox. Now hitboxes are actually really easy to make. All you need to do is go into your costumes. I'll go ahead and clean this up a bit. All right, that's better. And all I need to do is paint a new costume and name this hitbox. And I'll put that before the cat. And all a hitbox is, is a smooth shape, like a rectangle, that goes around the shape of your player. That way your collision scripts don't detect stuff that's really picky, like your tail, your arm, or your whiskers, or these pokey ears, because it can get stuck on those things. So all we need to do is copy the cat into the hitbox and then draw a box around where we think it should collide. So let's go ahead and draw it like right here and go down to there and probably about like that would be a good hitbox. Now make that go to back, select everything right here, hold shift and deselect the hitbox and then delete. Now go ahead and center the box and the reason that we want to center it is because if it's offset and we turn directions it will move slightly as you can see here's at 90 and then when we switch to the left it moves because it's not in the center. So if we center that no matter what direction we are it will always stay at the same spot. So now all we need to do is right before the movement switch cost into the hitbox. And as you can see here, now our cat has disappeared and it's a square, which isn't very good. However, no matter how much we turn back and forth, we can't get stuck in the circle or the wall or anything. So to make our cat look like a cat again, right after we've done all the movement and collisions, just switch costume to the cat. As you can see now, it looks like we're a cat, but the whiskers can clip through because we're actually colliding with the hitbox. And that's the power of using the tick because it happens all in one frame so that you can't actually see it switching to the hitbox. Okay, now the last step to all of this is adding scrolling so that way the camera will follow the cat around. This is actually pretty simple, but we need two variables to store the position of the camera. So make a for all sprite variable called scroll x and then a for all sprite variable called scroll y. Then in the very beginning, let's go ahead and set those to 0, 0. That way we are in the middle of the screen. Now all we need to do is make the player actually be affected by the position of scroll x and y. So down here where we have the movement, all we need to do is instead of just x, do x minus scroll x and same for the y, y minus scroll y like so. Last but not least, we need to do the same thing here. So take out these x and y's and then just duplicate the x minus scroll x and y minus scroll y. And as you can see, it looks like nothing changed. But if we go ahead and show scroll x and double click it until it turns into a slider, when we slide it, our cat moves 
moves and that looks really really weird and that's because the wall doesn't move with the camera so all you need to do is duplicate this script right here and pull it into the wall now inside the wall just do when i receive tick position player go to all that and it should have made these two for the sprite only variable and then on wing green if i click go ahead and set the x and y to zero okay and you can now see that if we change the scroll x here we go it moves everything on the screen like a camera would and our collision still works when we move our camera around okay now that we know it's actually working we can hide the scroll x and make the scroll x automatically change to the position of the player so it'll follow it so what we need to do is make a block called move camera like so and then click ok now go ahead and move camera underneath the movement like this now this is actually a super super simple script all you need to do is change the scroll x by the desired position which is the X, that's the position of the player, minus its current position, which is scroll X. And then to make that smooth, we can take it times a number smaller than one. So I'll do 0.1, so it's nice and smooth. Now we need to do the same thing for the Y. So duplicate that and change the scroll Y by the Y minus the scroll Y times 0.1. And as soon as we do this, when we move, the camera actually will follow the cat. That's super exciting. And the walls will actually move too, and we can bump our heads and it still collides everything is working properly and you can even edit the position of the wall by changing the x and y variable so if i set the position to like 150 as you can see it moves over to the right so that's how you make scrolling wall collision with a nice camera system and a smooth collision system you can of course adjust the hitbox because as you can see the feet aren't quite perfect they kind of are too far so if you go into the hitbox drag this up a little bit and then recenter it as you can see now because we made it smaller there we go our feet are more flush with with the wall and so are the ears. I hope this helped you out making your top down games. If it did, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Owen and I'm out.